those are the students they accepted because so many students Welcome to Ask Dr. Gray Pre-Med Q&A. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Dr. Gray? I'm doing great. Happy New Year. Um, you are my neighbor, as we found out, which is, which is fun <laughs> to know. What can I help you with? Um, today, I have a question that kind of has to do with community college post Okay. And specifically, how medical schools view them. Yeah. Um, and if in your experience, you've had students who did most of their prereqs at a community college, who are still able to get accepted to more selective medical schools. Yep. Um, I know that in the past you've mentioned that yep. going from university to a community college can be seen as kind of a red flag, but is that still the case if you have the MCAT and GPA to match what the school is looking for? The question is, why are you doing classes at a community college? So there's, there's multiple reasons. E- either number one, you did poorly in undergrad, and you, you went to a community college because that's just what fits your life and schedule now. Or you did well in undergrad, but you need the prereqs, and so you're doing them at a community college. Those potentially tell two different stories that, that are, one is obviously much easier to overcome than the other. What, what's the situation for you? Uh, the situation for me is I did well in undergrad. Okay. Um, And my grandpa ended up dying my first semester. So my mom moved out to Colorado where he was. And I graduated early and came back out here to help her with some of that. um, And like with the house that she was working on out here. And I had no idea what formal postdocs were at the time. Mm -hmm. I've now realized that I think CU has one. They do. Um, I'm very, very good friends with the advisor there. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But I'm happy with my decision. I really like the community college I go to. I feel like I get very good one-on-one help and it costs about a tenth as much. <laughs> yes, that is a benefit. So it sounds like you said your undergraduate GPA is good, right? It's, it's yeah. not an issue. So for you, I wouldn't even give a second thought to doing it at a community college. You have a good reason awesome why you're doing it at a community college. You're not trying to prove anything because you already have proven your academic success at the institution that you were at before, and now you're just taking the prereqs and what you need to do to get into medical school at the community college. So in my mind, not a red flag at all. Will there be some schools out there that still don't like it? Maybe, but screw them. Yeah, I know a lot of schools say that they don't mind community yeah. college, but then you just never really know. You never really know. I, I think hopefully, right, one of the silver linings of this pandemic is we're going to hopefully, and it was funny, I was just actually um, DMing with a, a director of admissions at a medical school um, on, on Instagram. And, and she said, uh, and I'm literally reading this because we just had this conversation. She said, COVID has presented many schools with an opportunity to reevaluate reevaluate requirements and processes in terms of necessity versus preferred. And I think what's going to happen is schools are going to really do a really deep hard look at their processes. And 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 part of their rubric potentially is was it at a community college? Oh, mark off two points, right? And and do we need that? What's the point of that? Can we get rid of it? Is it truly hurting our students? Do the students who come from community college, do we have data that supports that they do worse in medical school? Or is it just some snobbery that we've continued for the last 30 years that we don't need anymore? And so I think hopefully one of the silver linings of COVID is that we get a lot of um, newer processes in place for medical schools that this whole community college garbage goes out the window. That would be awesome. Because like the way I think about it is the classes I'm taking are science classes mm-hmm. and science doesn't change depending on where you go. Science so does not change. Kind of yeah. all the same everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of nice unless you go to anti-vax university and then the science is maybe yeah, a little bit different. The science is maybe not so scientific. <laughs> Oh, don't bring that stuff up in, in podcasts and videos. That'll, that'll uh, hurt. Um, well, hopefully that helps. Any other questions? Um, I guess kind of along the same lines of taking classes at a community college, do you know if medical schools view all classes that are taken at a community college as lower division? Because um, I know a lot of community colleges, like the one I go to, offers microbiology and anatomy and physiology. And if I were to have taken those in university, they would have been upper div. Um, 
but I know that that could be different. I, again, I, I don't think for you specifically, upper division and lower division, nothing matters. You're not trying to prove academic capability. You are just out there taking the courses you need to take to get into medical school. Now, microbiology, anatomy, physiology, those are not prereqs for medical school. So the question for, for you is why take them if they're not required? Yeah, or for is me, it just it's preparation for medical school? Um, a little bit of both. It's preparation, but also I did AP biology in high school, and I tested out of biology then at the okay. college level. Yep. So I know a lot of medical schools say that you – Either they just completely accept that and it's fine yeah. or some require you to take else. a year of upper div classes. Yeah. And I was a biological anthropology major. So I have neuroanatomy classes and genetics classes, but they're all within the anthropology department. Um, and I don't know exactly how those will be viewed by medical schools. Yeah. I, I think take, take what you can and the schools are going to evaluate them, how they're going to evaluate them. Usually uh, the, the microbiology will, will probably count as the bio requirements. It's not, it likely won't be cool. an issue. And and you can always, this is the, the type of thing where you can specifically reach out to a school, right? And say, uh, look at the MSAR, right? The medical school admissions requirements the AAMC puts out. Unfortunately, you have to pay for it. Uh, and, and that will list some things for you in terms of requirements for each school. Um, or you can just reach out directly to the school um, without that and say, here's my situation. Here's the class I'm taking. Will this count? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Awesome. And then I guess my last question, a little bit less related because it doesn't necessarily have to do with going to community college. Um, what would your advice be to students who are trying to figure out which schools to apply to? And maybe they have a GPA that's above the average for that school, but an MCAT in range or vice versa. Is there one that you should be putting more emphasis on that makes you a good Neither. candidate? For a school. Neither. Neither. Yeah. So I, I go against the grain with this um, kind of philosophy in terms of picking schools. I don't think students should be picking schools based on stats. Every student does this. And you know what that does? <laughs> it perpetuates the stats. Because That's true, students yeah. are only applying to the schools where they are in range or self-selecting. But what that does is the school only has those options to choose from. And that's, those are the stats that come out every year to go, here are the stats of students that we accept, right? But it's not who they accept. That's just what they accepted, right? That's in terms of the, the 10th percentile, 90th percentile, 50th percentile, et cetera. Um, those are the students they accepted because so many students self-select, all of those stats kind of stay the same. And unfortunately, schools are not transparent and the, the MSAR is not transparent with the the fringes of the the on the lower end is really where we're talking about right of of mm -hmm. what it what's the lowest MCAT you will accept what's the lowest GPA you will accept and I I gave a talk in Toronto last year two years ago now um, talking about transparency and, and it was an admissions committee conference it was for admissions officers and and. I gave the talk from the pre-med voice. I, I said, here's, here's where pre-meds are pissed off with you all, is you, you're not transparent. You hide these cutoffs from students, and they don't know. And so they won't apply to your school where they may be an amazing fit for your class and your mission and everything else. But you won't let them know that they'll accept a three. You'll accept a three point one student because your MSAR says that your tenth percentile is a three point seven, and right. and there's there's just so much miscommunication and so many myths around stats in terms of GPA and MCAT that it scares students from applying to schools where they may be an amazing fit because there's something in their application that the school is really looking for, and so I throw stats out the window and say. Where do you want to be, right? What's your number one choice in terms of school? Ignore the stats, right? Now, obviously, stats are important. I'm not saying stats don't, don't matter and you can get into Harvard with a 2.5 GPA. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying start by not looking at stats. Do your research in terms of mission, uh, vision, what sort of programs they have, residency things that they have there in terms of resources potentially that you're interested in. If maybe you're interested in dermatology or orthopedics or ophthalmology and they don't have that 
program at that institution will maybe think about not applying there. Now, 75% of students change their mind anyway once they're yeah. in medical school. So that's a kind of a hard thing to look at. But it's a start. Look at location. Look at weather. Look at class size. Look at curriculum type. Look at all of these other things that will determine, am I going to be happy here or am I not? And then as you start to build your list, do some some looking at GPA and MCAT and ignore the, the median, right? The MSAR gives you median, which means 50% of the class is below it, 50% of the class is above it. Doesn't really tell you anything. Look at that yeah. 10th percentile and go, how close am I to the 10th percentile? Am I confident enough in my whole application to know that, yes, I'm, I'm right around that 10th percentile mark and they don't give me the how far below the 10th percentile mark they'll accept, uh, but I'm right around it and I'm confident that I'm a really good fit for the school that I'm going to apply anyway. That's great to hear. That is all, everything you've said today has been very reassuring for me and feels good to hear. Good. Anything else? That's all the questions I had for today. Awesome. Well, good luck to you. And uh, you. as a neighbor, maybe we'll, we'll see each other down on Pearl Street one day. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's insane.